Okay, moving on. City manager, city attorney. Please. Okay. Um, as you're all aware, there was an election uh, in a number of communities, including Lake Worth, uh, last August 26th, and it appears that after the election, a number of people expressed concerns about the election process. There have been letters to the editor, there have been emails, there have been phone calls, um, where a number of people indicate that they either were completely disenfranchised and not did not vote, or that they were at least frustrated and ran into difficulties uh, at the voting uh, place. I mean, there's a letter, I think, in all of our uh, inbox here from uh, Ms. Helen Greenwood, and she talks about how the supervisor election went there and resolved the issue and apologized, but um, it seemed like there were a lot of issues with people voting. And again, it's nothing to do with the results of the election. Uh, everybody's right to vote is sacred. You know, people have died in wars to protect the right to vote. Uh, people have come here from other countries so they can exercise the right to vote. And when the right to vote is frustrated, that's what this issue is about tonight. Uh, and that is whether people in Lake Worth and throughout the county were disenfranchised or frustrated in their ability to vote. And if so, what, if anything, the city should do about that? Um, so we'll start with the idea that the, uh, the supervisor had a new technological system this year where you swipe the driver's license into an iPad, and that seemed to cause lots of issues. Uh, lots of people said their name didn't pop up or popped up at the wrong address, and they were sent away and tried to come back later to vote. Uh, some people actually did come back and vote a second time after they voted what's called a provisional ballot. So if you go to vote and it doesn't work, the, the uh, supervisor can take what's called a provisional ballot, where you put your ballot in a sealed envelope, and presumably that sealed envelope thing goes into a sealed box. So it's a little disconcerting that some of those sealed envelopes in those sealed boxes were apparently taken out in the field by elections workers when the person came back to vote again. If the box is sealed, you shouldn't be going back in the box at all. And there's at least um, seven people in Lake Worth that that happened to, that we know about. And there were, we don't know how many people didn't come back or how many people uh, may not have been captured by the supervisor's data that they gave us. So, I don't know if you've seen this, I'll pass this down. Um, we made a, we went to the canvassing board meeting. The, the mayor was there, the clerk was there, and I was there, and then Christy got over from our office, came and relieved me. Uh, and uh, a couple of people in the audience I noticed were there as well. And the meeting of the canvassing board is a sunshine law meeting. It's open to the public, just like everybody here can hear my comments. They could hear the mayor and the commissioner's comments. That was not true with the canvassing board. If you were sitting in the front row, you would not hear what the canvassing board was saying because they were speaking. And that's the way the meeting was. There was no microphone. There was no. Uh, there was a little tape recorder on the side. Uh, we made a public records request to get a copy of that tape, see how much really was heard. And the supervisor elections and the other two people on the campus board would have discussions about each ballot. They would see this form, the original ballot form, and they would look at it, and they would make a determination whether that person's vote should count or not. And again, it was difficult, if not impossible, to hear what they were saying and what was their reason. And again, as citizens, you all know you want to hear what your mayor and commissioners say and how they vote and why they vote that way. And in that case, you didn't even know how they voted sometimes. And I would ask questions, and uh, she's not here tonight, but Christine Stapleton from the Post was there, and she got up a couple of times and said, what's that? I mean, don't you think that we should know what you're saying? And their answer was no. At least the supervisor's answer was no. So um, we uh, made a request to, to look at all of the provisional ballots, and there were 30 of them in Lake Worth. And 14 of those 30, the individual that went to vote filled out this form perfectly. They did everything right, they signed their name, they listed all the information they had to, but they were not counted. They were not counted because one of the supervisor's clerical people in the field made a mistake. Now, I don't know about you, but if I go to vote and you make a mistake, why should my vote not count? And that was 14 people. It doesn't matter to me how they voted. The fact is their votes weren't counted, and we believe under the law their votes should have counted. And there might have been more people that we don't know about. We only know the ones that the supervisor provided. So that's really the issue is, did the supervisor's canvassing board comply with the Sunshine Law? Did they meet appropriately and let the public know how they were making their decision and the basis for their decisions? Did they properly count provisional ballots or not? Should they have 
counted those voters who, for no fault of their own, but it wasn't counted because a clerical person made a mistake on what he or she filled out on the, on the back of this form. Um, and then uh, kind of the third issue is the overriding issue of how much frustration was there in the community? How many people didn't come back to vote? Uh, I know it was at a League of Cities meeting, I think it was the next day, and there was a table of elected officials from around the county, Manalapan, Ocean Ridge, uh, Haverhill, who had similar issues in their community. And one woman who strikes, uh, who I can remember, was a woman who lived in Delray Beach, who works for um, FAU. And she said, yeah, I went to vote, and I swiped my, my driver's license, and they said, you didn't show up here, so you can't vote, but you can come back later. Well, 15 minutes later, her husband came to vote, and the lady said, oh, yeah, your wife was just here. We made a mistake. She should have been allowed to vote. Now the woman went to work. She couldn't come back to vote. She didn't get to vote. So the question is really the Supervisor Elections Office and the way they conduct an election, is it appropriate? And if it's not appropriate, should we do anything about it? That's really the issue today. Nothing, really nothing to do with this particular election, this particular results, other than this election was the one that we observed, and from talking to other elected officials in other cities, they had similar issues. And Glenn, if you could clarify too, because I was, I was with him um, in there, I asked the supervisor of elections when she was discarding the provisional ballots. Again, remember the provisional ballots are sealed. There's, you, you can't see anything of the ballot. You just see what the part that these elections persons looks at. Um, and I asked him, why did you get rid of those ballots? And she said, because they weren't filled out properly. And I said, so is it your policy or is there a law that you do not accept provisional ballots that are filled out properly by the voter that the clerk in the polling location fills it out incorrectly, so that makes that person's vote not count. And I said, is that what you're saying? Is there a policy or is there a law? And she said, consult your legal attorney. That's what I was told. So that's what we're not doing. It's not an answer, and that's why we're here. Again, and, and then in addition to that too, the staff, again, they're regulated by the same laws that we are in Sunshine Laws. They're running the meeting. They went outside numerous times. I'll, I'll give you my personal experiences of being there. They went outside and conversed amongst one another, outside, through a window, talking to one another, while we sat in there with other members of the media. That was two. Three was at one point, the supervisor of elections came in and said, it appears that some of the cartridges may not have been read. And she joked and looked at me, don't worry, it's not Lake Worth. Then she went outside, came back in and said, oh, it was Lake Worth. This is all on record and on tape. Oh, it was Lake Worth. And I said, well, what are you saying about the cartridges? She says, well, it appears that one of the districts that had two precincts in, um, two, two, uh, precincts in the same district, um, that they had, one of them was counted and the other was not. And I said, well, how can you recognize that? She said, you can tell by the cartridge. Okay, so she's obviously one was not read. She went back out. She says, I'm going to delete the numbers from that precinct and add the numbers and run the numbers off that cartridge again. She came back and said, oh, apparently it was red because the numbers are the same. But indeed there was one vote difference because when she went out it was 25 and then it was 24. So I'm, I'm confused as to exactly what that process was about. And then since then we made these different public records requests and they've not been the most forthcoming in providing public records. So many of you have made public records requests, and I think you're all aware of that, that you know, the agency, in a reasonable time, has to provide the records they have. Um, uh, Christina office was there yesterday, and we requested a copy of the disk that showed, um, let's see, electronic records of the results of the scan driver's license to show whether they were going through properly or not. So that's $400. $400? Just for a copy of a disc. I mean, what does the disc cost? A dollar ninety-five to buy. So, um, you know, we're not looking to create a problem. So we wrote it back again today and said, you know, please give us your justification as to why four hundred dollars for a public record. And so those are kind of the issues: the, the good government, public record, sunshine law, the conduct of an election. So that hopefully this doesn't happen in November, because if you think about it, this is almost like we were the guinea pig for November, and if this is going to happen on a bigger scale in November, there's going to be a major, major problems uh, countywide on elections. So the question to the commissioner earlier, really, what if anything, and I know there are people out there, I think these were testified, really want to tell their story of what they went through, 
um, on election things. I've only heard most of it anecdotally. I haven't really uh, spoken directly. Many people I've seen a lot of emails on it, um, and so it's kind of it, gathering facts at this point. Is was there enough of an issue to make an issue out of it? To do more than just talk about it here tonight, 